Honestly, you do not want to celebrate Halloween. Now, before you continue to watch this video, please have an open mind. S pay attention, like sit down to actually listen to what this video has to say. So this video is more like to inform you how soul damaging it is to go celebrate Halloween and all the other things that the world has deemed as normal. Anyone who knows me from before 2020 would know that I used to be a huge horror fanatic, right? Like I used to love horror. I would watch it every weekend. In fact, when Halloween came around, that month, the month of October, would be my favorite month of the year, not even my birthday. It would just be Halloween, cause like I got to dress up, get candy. It was watching horror and celebrating Halloween that made me dive more into new age spirituality, which is basically, it's, it's a faith, it's not a religion per se, it's very pantheistic, which is basically like, oh, like God is in everyone and everything, yada, yada, yada. I, I, don't ask me why I would believe in that. I, I was just young, I was young and stupid, right? Aren't we all? But this was really young and stupid. And I'm hoping that with this video, please like be informed. The question is what changed me from this horror fanatic person that I was into this suddenly like Bible thumper, um, spiritualist or whatever else you guys want to call me. Um, what changed? First off, let me just show you a video about this woman who was in the occult and got out of it and what she has to say about Halloween. I come from five generations of witches and this is why I don't celebrate Halloween. Halloween promotes fear, darkness and death. During this night, a lot of sacrifices and blood rituals are done. When I used to be a witch, we used to do rituals and sacrifices. We used to be so involved in witchcraft that my dad committed suicide. He was being tormented by these demons. My spirit guide started to torment me. He wanted my blood, so I tried to commit suicide. My family was destroyed. After being involved in the occultism, we struggled with poverty, infirmity, addictions and mental health issues. One day, I encountered the love of Jesus and I was set free forever. I stopped being tormented by these demons and the Lord restored me and my family. So, now the thing is, I also practiced to be a medium. So that meant I was opening my third eye to be able to see and talk to spirits, mediums and psychics and go like, hey, I want to talk to my dead grandma, dead partner. These demons put on a face mask and come in and talk. Cookie, you probably were schizophrenic. You were hallucinating. Um, you know, it's just your mind playing tricks on you. You were going through a lot. I had a pretty normal childhood. I had parents who were just workaholics. So I didn't get that much attention. But apart from that, I was pretty normal. It was so young and stupid of me and so naive that, by the way, horror movies and like all the things I was doing, like the new age spirituality was just gateways to more decisions that were that resulted in consequences more than blessings so it would be temporary blessings but at the end of it i would my soul was like sucked dry i was still so unhappy because these demons when you give them something you're coming into agreement with them so it's like a legal right to you maybe some of you are christians who are watching this and you would say oh cookie but like you know uh demons can't touch christians to an extent that's true however certain belief systems that you might have can be transformed from footholds to strongholds to actual demonic oppression and that only comes if you don't have a strong prayer life if you're not constantly in fellowship and communion with the lord and savior jesus christ the decisions that you make you might think is good for you but really it's it's not on the conjuring that you got 
um, like physical stuff happen to you. The conjuring is. It's a. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> what a lovely shot. I feel like I'm gonna throw darts into my mouth or something. Um, but I. I guess that's really selling <laughs> like, the so fear. Intense. It is a fun acting challenge. Oh, it was amazing. But yeah, it was pretty. In, it was pretty intense. Some weird stuff happened on set, along with the movie being scary. It's true. I developed this bizarre rare out of nowhere blood disorder um and basically my my body like all the red platelets from my body were like drained they were just like gone so i had like high risk of internal bleeding um and i was potentially gonna need like a blood transfusion it was so dramatic so i had to every day before work and after work go to the hospital get my blood taken and then all of a sudden i got home <laughs> and i've never had a problem with my blood since this is from an individual who actually has their third eye still open. Mine's closed, by the way, because um, I went to a church and I was being tormented so much uh, during sleep. So the church prayed for me, closed my third eye, so I no longer can see or hear them, but sometimes I feel them and I can still discern them on people and things. But this is from an individual who can literally switch to seeing in the spirit realm. And this is what he has to say about Halloween. Sup, my name is Phoenix. I can see the spirit realm and these are my experiences. All right, so this encounter happened when I was living in Flagstaff, Arizona. It was during either, it would have been my junior or senior year of uh, college up there. This all happened on Halloween night as well, which is important to note. So during this night, I don't remember what I'd been doing that day. But anyway, during the night, I woke up in the middle of the night and I remember feeling really weird. Like, it was like my whole body was, like, vibrating. Like, I don't know how to explain. Like, it was, like, vibrating and, like, tingling. Kind of like when your arm falls asleep or, like, your leg. But it was, like, my whole body. And I wake up and it's, like, my face is right next to what I thought was my wall. But I realized then it was the texture of my ceiling. So, as I'm moving my head around, I realize that it's, like, I'm up in my room somehow. Like, above my bed. And I look down and I can literally see my body laying in my bed. So this happened to me a few times before, but so I was like, oh, like, master projecting. <laughs> not by choice. I don't know if you should do that by choice, but it's definitely, it was not by choice. And as I'm hearing all this, like, Gregorian chanting, and, like, I'm looking at, my, the, like, the ceiling, and I'm, like, feeling super weird and tingly, and I can't move. I feel like I'm, like, pinned down or restrained somehow. Then I also see this, like, weird ring of glowing red light all around me. It's like this ring of red light goes all, wraps around me somehow, like, I'm in the center of it. And then we're standing just outside this ring is like are like people but not like it's not like people that are there physically it's like i could tell that they were it's like they were astral projecting and so when i'm in this state as well it's like my spiritual state is heightened it's like i can see and just know everything like so clearly so it's like i see all these people that are doing this chanting and i can tell i'm like i know that there's some kind of witches or satanists and i can see demons like standing behind them like all around in the circle around this glowing red ring and then there's all these like witches and satanists around it and then there's all like these demons surrounding them behind them and then it's also weird because it's like i was in my room but like not it was like also like i was in the middle of a forest which i mean checks out because where i'm at in flagstaff like my house is literally surrounded it's like in the middle of a forest like there's pine trees and stuff everywhere so it was like I, somehow the house like wasn't there it was like see-through almost and it was like I was in the middle of the woods more, but like not, like still in my room kind of. So anyway, I'm freaking out and I'm like, uh, like what's going on? And so I'm like trying to like wiggle and break free, but nothing happened. So this is also at a time when I'm trying to rebel against God. I'm trying to like prove him wrong and be like, mm, I don't want to follow the Bible and Christianity, like being stupid. But as always, in my moments of weakness and stuff like this, I always ended up turning to God and being the gracious and loving, forgiving God he is, he always chooses to help me even when I did not deserve it at all for the lifestyle I was living. So anyway, I pray and ask God to help and send his angels or do something to help me right after I pray this. It's like blue fire, the fire of the Holy Spirit, which is always like a light blue, whitish flame, comes down from the middle of the ceiling, like comes in and spreads over me, shoots out and spreads and lights on fire like the red ring. So that red ring of light that was around me, it now turns into like the blue fire of the Holy Spirit that's like forming a ring around me. And then it also like it shoots out and attacks all these people and it's like they all disappear. All these witches and Satanists, like they're all gone. All the demons are gone. It's like nothing left. Right after that happens as well, I feel myself slammed down into my bed. I jolt awake in my body. It literally felt like I'd been thrown down into my bed. 
I was like, Jolt awake, I sit up in my bed and I'm like freaking out. I'm like looking around, there's nothing around, nothing. But it's like, I still feel weird and stuff. So I start praying for protection and stuff. And then I guess I just fell back asleep. I don't, I don't really remember doing anything after that. Did not feel like a dream. It felt way more real than that. And you know, I was trying to think because like at this time in my life, like, yeah, I was dabbling in like all this other stuff, but I wasn't like, I didn't know any other witches. The only connection I can think of that who might've sent this was that a couple months before this, I had been dating a witch. So yeah, that's my story of how I was forcefully astral projected on Halloween night by some weird coven or cult or something. So if now you've come to an understanding that this is an actual real thing and going to celebrate Halloween even for with a good intention that you don't want all these demons to come and play with you isn't really... <laughs> it still opens doors. You're still keeping your door unlocked for those demons to enter and influence your life. Um, so I might make another video about oppression and how to get out of it. Of course, using, again, Phoenix's, um, well, his experience as well. And I will also give you certain verses and psalms that actually help with finally living instead of surviving this world. Because that was what you're meant to do. You're meant to live, not survive. So comment, share, like, and see you next time.